this is how our task executor model will look like so we will be understanding all the concepts related to the task executor the AGVs, dispatchers, AGV network properties and the control points hey guys welcome to the channel IF 4.0 this is Ajay we will now use another uh, AGV and we'll try using it by using dispatcher so this will be our AGV 1 I will add one more control point into it because we need to have a parking point for that AGV so I have added a control point here I have made a connection travel AGV location there and I will enable show connection so that we'll have that view available there so you can see that the dispatcher we are going to draw it so the dispatcher it will is an object in a task executor which dispatches the task to the available or task executors so say for example I'm having two AGVs depending on the strategy selected here pass to the dispatcher is going to assign the task to the respective AGV so now we are using, going to use a first available basis so whichever AGV is going to available first the task will be transferred to that AGV of load and unload to the plant 1 from plant 1 to plant 2 if you are going to use it round robin shortest queue we have lot of options depending on our operational or organizational or industrial project requirement we can use those parameters here and we can run those things so what I will do is I'll reset now we need to keep this in mind that the center connection should be made between the queue and the dispatcher then we need to make a connection from dispatcher to AGV from dispatcher to AGV 1 it is very important to make a connection from dispatcher to AGV if you are going to make it reverse then it is not going to work for a model so please remember that the connection should be from dispatcher to AGV which would be a connection now in the queue we have already used transport which is center object 1 now the center object 1 for the plant uh, queue is dispatcher you can see in the ports center is dispatcher and we have already assigned the top logic so we are going to reset and run the model and you can see that the AGVs are the task has been distributed amongst AGVs So you can see the smoothness so how smoothly the tasks are assigned to respective AGV by the dispatcher so this way you can distribute the tasks into n number of AGVs into the model by a single dispatcher so the single dispatcher will be connected to the fixed resource which will be having a list of tasks which needs to be completed and he will decide which AGV will be performing that task so the dispatcher is a very important tool or object for transferring the tasks to multiple task executors so we have also created one control point here so and we are having AGV network path so I will stop the model and we can see the properties of the control point so the control point is a point which is basically used to control the logics for the AGVs so we are having maximum allocations here so maximum allocations means that maximum number of AGVs or task executors can stand on that single control point so if you are going to make it 256 it is going to change accordingly so I'll show you we'll make the allocation of this control point to 2 which states that 2 AGVs will be coming at a time on this control point so you can see now the another it will it will not stop here so it is not stopping it's a very seamless flow but if I make this as one then the AGV stops for a fraction of seconds so that is what is the change so you can see it was stopped now again it started so this is the difference of the control point maximum allocations then we have deallocation type this is not mostly used maximally the default thing is only used which is deallocate at next control point then we have connections 
this is a location collection that means the EGV is is connected as a location so it has its location it can also be used as EGV travel so if I show you the A connection from this control point to this control point you will have all these options popping out here so this is next work point work forwardings park points pick up points drop off points so the name itself I, I in, indicates what the connection is going to do so if you are going to make this one next work point the EGV is going to move to that control point for looking for work work forwarding is it the EG will come to this control point and transfer the work the EG will come to this control point for parking the EG will come to this point for picking up any load or dropping of any point so this is what this is used to be a very specific with the control point connections but we will not apply any logic as of we will make it we will use it a very simple conventional method as of a normal method just there will be no rules or set of logics applied as of then we have the ports connections labels and the triggers here depending on our requirement we can use the triggers here these were the properties of the control point the control point after control point we are going to have this AGV network so this path basically the path has the properties this is two way two way means the AGV can go back and forth on this path as of currently we will make it only one way path then we are going to have the option here go which type of path this you need to put straight curved spur then we have accumulation type default accumulation or no accumulations then we have AG orientation whether the AGV needs to be backward needs to be forward we will keep default any any type of EGV orientation can path pass through this path because in the industry we have certain constraints that the EGV should only move in forward direction or only move in the backward direction you can apply that logic here for each of the path you can apply these uh, constraints for EGV orientation accumulation and path class types then we have conditional rules and then we have triggers for each path we can have diff multiple triggers but these triggers you will be having in the AGV property so when you right click on any of the path you will have this AGV network when you click on this you are going to have AGV network properties popping out so in this AGV network properties we are having path classes load types initialized travel and then we can have multiple different types of AGVs and their properties assigned here but as of we will keep this as default AGV so this property of default AGV basically tells that what should be its acceleration speed deceleration when it is empty here when it is loaded here so we have the forward speeds for different types of paths reverse speed for different types of paths loaded and empty then we have battery use in amperes when empty and loaded what should be the rate of battery discharging then we have the battery capacity here then we have the idle usage what is the ideal usage of the battery and what is the recharge rate here so you can enter the battery uh, capacity or specifications here if we have this AGV network properties will automatically take it automatically route it then we have another very important uh, property here which is attached load as trailers so basically this can be used for AGV tuggers so when we are going to use AGV tugger into our model systems we need to use this features that's very important so I will show you one example when I use this checkbox and you can see that the part is attached at a as a trailer to the AGV rather than uh, it has been loaded on the AGV so you can see it's just like a trailer attached behind the AGV so the load is attached as the trailer so we'll go into the AGV properties again uncheck this and we'll see so we have this load type loaded or unloaded then we have the path so you can apply different conditions based on your requirement here and you can that can be applied to the paths and type of load it is handling 
then we have control point connections we already saw that in the control point connections uh, window for the control point we have location next work point and so on so you can use this window to apply the rules to this connection point connections so this is not mostly used you can have the this this color is basically the color for the path so when you make a connection the the, the connection color tells you that it should be a location and it should be a next path then we have accumulation types so this is the default accumulation methodology used then you have proximity detections you can put it from front of AGV from behind of AGV how the accumulation strategies should be used thresholds adding trailing time stops threshold so this is all related to the proximity so if it is within one meter the AGV will end with the proximity stop state and slow down to stop so this is the stop threshold and this is resume threshold so whenever AGV is away in two meters of the AGVs then the AGV will start moving or else it will stop this is the proximity detection for accumulation intersection stop points we have so this is the path entry which defines uh, the distance before path entering interactions where AGV will stop on path long on path short then we have prioritize control point look ahead and intersection clear points then we have DA locations type DA location type we have seen here this is basically to check or to apply a rule whenever a control point is deallocated and how it is supposed to get deallocated so deallocated with the trailing edge center edge leading edge you can have multiple options here you can put those based on the distance time deallocation can be applied we have the conditional rules here we can apply the agv dot type equal to one and all those conditional rules here depending on your requirement we have waypoints waypoints then we have generals and then we have triggers here triggers can be applied here we were not able to apply triggers here we are going to apply the triggers here in the AGV network properties and it will be reflected accordingly then we have general things applied here you can put here root cast there are a lot of things which as per your requirement can be manipulated and used so this is all about the AGV properties the most important AGV properties is the first window AGV types where we will be putting the speeds of the AGVs, battery details and attaching it as a load. I'll reset this and we will make the capacity of the AGV to say 10 and another AGV as 5 and we will make this 0 0.01 and the capacity of the Q as 10 so it should not be looking as very bulkier so you can see the EGV is now moving this way what we'll also do is we'll reset the model and we will change this allocation type to 2 and we will reset and run so you can see how the EGV are moving uh, with using the dispatchers so we'll go to the summary so what what we have done is as of is we used a single AGV by the conventional method then we connected that AGV with the AGV network after connecting it to the network we find out what the changes then we connected another AGV using the dispatcher for transferring the material then we saw control point properties in detail then we checked out AGV network properties and its constraint so this is related to the task executor so I'll click on the EGV we are also having this another properties as EGV travelers so we can also switch a direction that EGV will be on reset so and apart from that I guess most of the parameters of the EGV that is the task executors are completed so almost all are done then we have also understand the dispatchers into itself and we have also checked this area of AGV network where control point is checked down join parts curved path and the straight path curved path is nothing but just like the straight path you can use a curved path there so that's nothing important and we also have a control area just like control point we have a control area 
you can put that control area here and it is just like the control point because this is a point and this is a area so depending on your requirement you can use the area or you can use the point mostly we are going to use control point for our uh, future assignments or projects but control area can also be used depending on the requirement so that's all for today so thank you team thank you for uh, signing and staying with me for understanding these task executors in the next upcoming video we will be understanding in detail the properties of operators and operator basically then we'll go with the task executor and so on so our next video will soon be coming on operators so stay tuned thank you stay safe